low wrist position, maybe he starts hand fighting. And so rather than trying to force the high wrist position, I just grab my own hand. Now even if he has his hands on my head, I don't care. I can still go. I'm going to take my right knee around the corner by the elbow, and I face across the body like so. From here, my left knee pinches on his lap muscle so that my knee gets higher than his back. And then I extend my leg to send the rest of it over the hips. Now I'm going to fall down onto my right hip, just like so. Now for the finish, my goal is not just to pull and squeeze on the neck. Especially if Ant grabs my choking arm with both of his arms. Um, and in a way we can pull the arms away from the neck, yep. Try to get in, inside my wrist too. And now if I try to squeeze with my arms, strong, strong defense, Ant. He good? He's yeah. fine. Okay. I can't put the choke on just by squeezing. The trick is to fold the neck. When I'm finishing a low wrist, especially a low wrist guillotine, my goal is to crunch Ant's chin to his own chest. So if Ant's gonna put it, he's gonna put his grips in again, he's gonna do every, all those things that people do to defend, I'm gonna pull Ant's chest to his chin with a strong back heel. So my left leg that's over his hips is gonna back heel as I pull my hips into Ant's hips. And that's without a hold. I'm not even trying to put pressure on the neck yet. I'm here with this leg, and I'm going to back heel my hips off the floor to glue my hips to his hips and just hang my body weight off of him. Okay, that's going to help keep his uh, chest stuck, and it's going to keep his chin being, I'm sorry, it's going to keep his chest being pulled toward his chin. I'm pulling his chest and his torso toward his own chin by back heeling. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm doing a side crunch where I'm using my side and oblique muscles to crunch his chin to his chest. I'm pulling myself underneath, trying to drive his chin into his chest. Now right now, I won't actually get the choke because Ant can lift his hips up and he can alleviate that pressure. Good, go back. Even, even without, uh, if he doesn't pass, just try to up. I try to crunch his chin to his chest and he can try pot up and keep that pressure off. But when I take my left leg and I latch onto his hip and I'm back healing, and now I'm gonna crunch his chin to his chest and he's gonna do all those things that people do to defend. He's gonna stand up and try pot, he's gonna pull my hand. <laughs> it goes on very fast. A quick experiment, you guys can do this at home. Understand that just the hyper compression of the chin to the chest will begin to interfere with the airway immediately. I'm going to begin reciting the alphabet and I'm going to start to bring my chin to my chest and you'll hear that my airway is getting obstructed. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K. You can hear that the airway and the vocal cords get obstructed. I can do the same, breath I can do the same exercise breathing loudly through my nose. Now, if I were to take a hand and put it on the top of my head, and I apply a little more downward pressure as I'm reciting A, B, C, D, you hear there's a point where I can no longer talk. I can no longer get airway through. I'll do the same thing with a breathing exercise. And at some point, I stop being able to get airway through my nose and my and my tray and my airway, just by the act of taking the head and chin and forcing it into the chest. Now, don't do this hard and fast. We don't want to hurt our partner's neck, but we can apply slow, steady pressure to slowly drive that chin to the chest until the airway is completely obscured. Okay. So understand that's the secret to a really good low elbow, or I'm sorry, low wrist guillotine, where our wrist, wrist stays in a low wrist position, is we want to really fold that head. 
We'll come back to this later when we talk about hook sweeping, because that's an important piece of the hook sweep as well, is folding that chin to the chest. One more time with a low wrist position. Low wrist, good chin strap. Let's rotate. Uh, let's do one more this way, then we'll do one the other way. I'm sorry. We'll be here. And he starts hand fighting. So I feel like I can't get to the high wrist position. No problem. I connect my hands here in a low wrist position. Even if hand keeps his grip on my choking arm, I don't care. I'm going to go through anyway. Good strong wrist. So from here, I take my knee to Ant's elbow and I face across the shoulder line, putting my knee on his lap muscle. From my knee on the lap muscle, a simple extension of my left leg will cast my leg over his hips. Now from here, I'm going to fold my right leg underneath me to sit my right hip, putting Ant's head on the floor. And now, as Ant puts in all the defensive things he does, I'm going to squeeze my arms. Strong defense, Ant. Strong defense, strong. And I can't put, I can't put the choke on. Now with my arms. I'm going to ask him to, 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 do, uh, to do a strong defense again. This time, I'm going to back heel with my left heel, and I'm going to side crunch to drive his chin to his chest. Strong defense, Ant. Real strong. Okay, we're here. And it's a very tight choke. Comes on very quick. So again, the action of back heeling with our legs to pull his hips in, combined with a side crunch to drive his chin to his chest, and we really uh, uh, up into like a, uh, all fours or something. And we're really we're pushing the hips in with our leg, and we're pushing the head in with our side, and we're crunching everything together to get that chin compression. One more thing I can show. Let's change the angle too. Actually, I'm sorry. We're just the same angle. It's so simple. One more thing that might happen. I come into my low wrist guillotine. Ant tripods up in an attempt to, to defend. If Ant tripods, I can bring my right leg through underneath. And I can connect my feet. I can close my guard. So now, my ability to back heel is twice as strong. So I can finish this. Tripod up. I can finish this with a single leg. Strong defense is there. I can finish this with a single leg for sure. Down in your knees. But if I'm trying to finish with one leg and I ever see Ant's knees come off the floor to tripod, I'm going to immediately pass my leg through and I'm going to close my guard. Now as Ant stays tripod, he puts in strong defenses, does everything he can. It's just, it's so strong. So if his knees stay on the floor and you can only get one leg over, that's fine. Work with one leg back healing on the hips. If at any point his hips rise and you have room underneath his body to bring your second leg through and lock closed guard around his hips, now you can back heal with the strength of both of your legs. And that's gonna be, that's gonna add a lot of power to the guillotine. Now let's finally look at it from the other end. I'm in here. I'd love nothing more than to get double closure with a high-risk guillotine. But Ant hand fights, and now I feel like it'd be dangerous for me to take my chin strap grip off. So I keep the chin strap on, and I connect my second hand, like so, with the arm out. Now from here, my knee goes to his knee as I go face across his body, like so. Now from here, my left leg extends and pass over his body. And my right leg pivots underneath of me. I go from here to here, and I sit to my right hip. Now my left leg back heels to pull my hips off the floor, and I use my side, my side oblique muscles to drive my shoulder and armpit down on his head to crunch his chin to his chest, and we have a strong low wrist guillotine. If during that process, come in, I can use it. If I get my low wrist guillotine, I come in and ant ant tripods up. I take my right leg through underneath and I lock a closed guard. And now I back heel with both legs 
as I crunch the chin to the chest to get my submission. For the last guillotine, let's talk about the low wrist arm in guillotine. This happens quite a bit against wrestlers. When I'm here, I've got my chin strap, my shoulder position, my elbow position. Now, rather than hand fighting, Ant throws his defensive arm around my body like he's going to try to wrestle me. So he's going to come up over the hip. He might drive into me and he might try to take me down like so. So when I'm in here, I've got my chin strap and I see Ant driving forward, going to wrap my body. I just grab my hand just like so. Just like we did in the last technique. So I have my low wrist to chin strap. My control hand comes through and I grab my own hand. Now, if Ant wants to go to hand fight now uh, with his, let's say his right hand, it's caught behind me, go back. I, I can keep it caught with my left elbow pinching here. Now when Ant goes to hand fight, he tries to pull it out, it's not easy. So his arm is caught behind me. That's the benefit of an arm in guillotine. Now, same thing, I come around the corner. I would like to throw my left leg up and over to make sure he doesn't pass my guard. If I go to sit to guard first and Ant passes, now there is no guillotine. There are ways to salvage the guillotine, but we're not gonna um, talk about that. And it's more advanced, and I just wanna get you guys the, the main things here. So I'm here, and exactly starts wrestling into me. I connect my hands. Right, I can't reach his hip right now. My right knee is too far away. So I bring my right knee in. If my knee is back here, I cannot reach. I slide in, knee to knee. Now my left leg comes up, and I catch the back. Now with my left leg on the back, there's no way he'll pass guard to my left hand side. I'm safe. From here, my right foot can fold in underneath me again. I windshield wipe right underneath, and I sit to my right hip, like so. Now, Ant's gonna try it hot up. He's gonna try to hand fight with his left hand, do all those things people do. I'm once again gonna back heel with my left leg, and I'm gonna use my armpit and my side muscles to do a crunch, to put pressure on the neck for a choke for a standard arm and guillotine, or a low wrist arm and guillotine. Same thing before. If I'm in an arm and guillotine with one leg over the hip, and ant tripods up to defend, what do you think I do? Absolutely, I bring my leg through. So let's go from this angle now. I got my chin strap. Ant wrestles in me. I connect my arm and guillotine. I connect my hands right here in a low wrist position. So I keep my chin strap, my left hand comes in, and I lock it in. My right knee slides up knee to knee, and now I can get my left leg over Ant's back. Now here, my right leg is going to windshield wiper in, and I sit to my hip. Now Ant, if he tripods up to defend, I just bring this leg through and I lock it closed guard, and I'll finish closed guard. If, uh, let me get my leg back over. If he stays on his knee, no matter, I just keep my right leg underneath, I hook, I make a hook in the hip on this side, connecting, so I pinch him between my two knees. I have his body caught between my two knees. And now from here, I use my legs to pull my hips off the floor, pulling my hips into his hips. And as I do that, I crunch his chin into his chest. For the strong choke. And so there we have five strong guillotines for you to work. Three of them with a high risk position which offers us immediate double closure and makes it hard for your opponent to hand fight. We have the high wrist, there's the standard high wrist with the arm out. We have the high wrist with the arm in where we look through and, uh, elbow to elbow and we use that unique grip. High wrist arm out, high wrist arm in. Then we have the palm to palm high wrist. And then we saw in situations where I cannot get the high wrist position, we have two good low wrist guillotine options. Low wrist with no arm, without the arm. 
and then a low wrist with the arm in. And in the low wrist guillotine, our goal is to back heel on the hips, to draw the hips down, to hang our hips off of them and drive ourselves hip to hip, and we hang off of them, while we simultaneously crunch sideways to drive their chin down into the chest to impede with their ability to breathe. Once again, using that factor, using that idea that when I'm here, I can breathe easily, but when my chin goes to my chest, my breathing is interrupted. Okay, so if we can crunch that chin in, you'll be doing well for closing their airway. The last short, short section of this video is gonna come down to that last fourth step of our submission system. Remember the front headlock is a four step system. Enter into it by getting their head lower than your armpit. Establish your initial control, chin strap, shoulder position, and elbow control. Create an immediate submission threat, ideally with a high wrist position. And then the last step, if the submission isn't there, advance your position. We can do this a couple different ways after we sit to the guard. And we can do this with any one of our guillotines. I'm not going to show all the different possibilities. You can do this with a high wrist, high wrist arm in, high wrist palm to palm, low wrist or low wrist arm in. It doesn't matter. Let's check it out. So I go for my guillotine. Maybe I go for a low wrist guillotine. I sit in and Ant is tripoding up and he's defending and I can't get the submission to work. I want to advance my position. To, to advance my position, I'm going to go with a hook sweep. I cannot let Ant get over my knee with the hook sweep. When I drop my left butter, when I left hook to put a butterfly hook in, I cannot allow Ant to jump over my legs. That will screw everything up. If I'm choking Ant with my right arm, I cannot let him get over my left leg, my opposite leg. So I'm back into my knees. I'm here. And he's up trying to defend. What I like to do from here is I'll take my, I guess my, my other leg, my free leg, my bottom leg, and I make a butterfly hook on the far leg. Here, the leg closer to the camera. Now when I go to pummel in my left butterfly hook, if Ant tries to hop over my guard at this point, go ahead, get over. My right butterfly hook makes it almost impossible. When Ant goes to hop over, I go ahead again. Just, I just use my right butterfly hook to keep his hips from hopping over. He goes to hop over, and I extend it back out in this direction. I make sure he can never get this leg over. If I'm lazy with my right leg and he hops over, maybe I keep my butterfly hook in, but I didn't do anything with it. Go back. So I've got to be strong with this butterfly hook. When he goes to hop over, I've got to extend it, and I've got to keep his weight on this side of me. So even without this leg in place, dropping this leg, hand goes to hop over, and I don't let it happen. That gives me enough time to take my left leg and pummel in a left butterfly hook, like so. Now if hand goes to hop over, once again, I use my butterfly hooks to stop it. I can't let Ant beat my knee. We'll talk more about that in a second. But the key to a good hook sweep from here is once again crunching the chin to the chest. And that's going to force him into a forward roll, just like a power half does when we attack the turtle. So from this position, my main goal with sweeping is to use my armpit to drive his head underneath of him as I use my hands to kind of pull his chest up and over the top. And I combine that with a little baby elevation with my butterfly hooks. And it puts Ant over into this position here. Now from here, I'm gonna come up, ba uh, basing on my right elbow here, scissoring my legs to go belly down. And I come up in top position. Now there's a lot of things I could do. I could lock the guards, choke from here. I could stay here and take side control. Or I can put my head to the floor and break my knee across for a pound. 
and now I can finish the guillotine from the mounted position. So one of the great ways to advance your position from guillotines is a hook sweep. If you've already committed your hips to the floor and into a guard position with a guillotine locked on, you're using your butterfly hooks to make sure they can't pass to the side they want to pass to, so I keep them extended out in this direction. And then I focus on using my guillotine to force his chin into his chest. And what happens, he's here and that chin gets forced and that chin gets forced, and it gets forced, and it gets forced deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper, until he has almost no choice but to roll over. I'll combine this either with butterfly hooks to elevate his hips, or another good way to combine this crunch is just by driving my feet and using them to kind of help bridge him over. To, as I continue to drive his head underneath. So I drive the head underneath, I bridge, I kind of use my hands to push his chest, and he goes over. One more time. I lock the grip, come again, leg goes over, he tripods, he's trying to avoid the sweep. So I put this butterfly hook in. So when my left leg comes down and hand tries to pass over, he can't. Now I can come on a left butterfly hook. And now as my left butterfly hook elevates, my right arm crunches his chin underneath the bone. And now I have a choice. I can come up, taking top side control. I can come up into darces. Or after I sweep him, I can go right up into a mount. You need some momentum to do that one, so let's one more time. I snap him down, I catch, we're here. I follow right up in the mount position, and I can put the choke on from there. So if I sit to my butt on a guillotine and I don't get the finish, look to drive his chin to his chest, driving his head underneath of his own body, forcing him into a forward roll, and use that to hook sweep him over to his back. Then get on top, and you've just used the guillotine to advance your position. Now what happens if my opponent starts to pass to the correct side? Well, then we go into a hip heist action, and we return to a kneeling front headlock. Right there, face me, kneeling front headlock. Now, let's say, I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Now, I'm here, I go, again, maybe low risk guillotine, maybe high risk guillotine, whatever, it doesn't matter. I come in, I go over, but Ant beat me to the punch, and he started passing. In a situation like this, I want to build up to an elbow, I want to hip heist, and I can return right to a kneeling front headlock position. From here I can go back in my attacks, or I can advance position in other ways that we're going to look at later on. So one more time, we'll do it from this side. This time, I put out my grips. I go for my guillotine, but I was lazy with my left leg and Ant begins the pop, process of passing to the correct side. From here, I do not want to stay on my back. If I stay on my back, I'm dead in the water. I've got to get on my side. So I'm going to come up to a left elbow and I'm going to use my, my trailing leg to drive into him and I use my right elbow to push into the shoulder. He's trying to drive into me. I use my right elbow to hold him off by framing against his shoulder with my right elbow here. From here, I build up to an elbow, my left elbow here. And as Andrew tries to drive into me to solidify side control, I prop on my opposite elbow and hand, elbow and foot to bring my hip off the floor. And now as he drives into me, I just pull my left leg back. I put my right knee back on the floor, and we're back into our front headlock kneeling front headlock position. From that kneeling front headlock, we can go back into all of our various guillotines we saw, or we could advance position in a number of other ways, with things like go-behinds, with things like hook sweeps, um, or we could go into figure four attacks as well, anacondas and darces, which are coming up later in the front headlock system as well. So I pull a seated front headlock, 
over here. I'm kneeling front headlock. I pulled my guard, making a seated front headlock. And now I, can, I have two choices to advance my position. I can either advance my position to the right by sweeping. Good. I'd like to keep him to my right. If I can keep him to my right, I'm gonna hook sweep him. If he starts fighting to my left, to, to my left, your right, then I try to force my way up to an elbow, and I hip heights back up to a kneeling front headlock. So if we're in this front headlock position, I have hook sweeps to one direction, I want to funnel him this way. If I fail and he starts bringing everything this way, we get back up and we reset. So that's a good overview of our guillotine attacks from the kneeling front headlock. Again, it's a four step system. Enter into it, establish control with three points of control, create an immediate submission threat, ideally with a high wrist position. And lastly, if the submission isn't there, you can always use your front headlock to advance positionally. Okay, you got five good guillotines, three high wrist variations, high wrist arm out, high wrist arm in, and the high wrist palm to palm. And if you cannot get the high wrist position because your opponent's doing a good job defending and hand fighting, stick with a lower wrist position that good chin strap and then from the low wrist either an arm out low wrist or an arm in low wrist and then we can either use those to either submit our opponent we can hook sweep them to one side and if our opponent begins to pass guard off of our guillotine we prop hip heist and return to our knees where we can reset and recycle the whole system thanks for watching guys